God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Whitfield Harrington coming to you with the Whitfield Harrington Show today. This is a show where we take a look at what's going on in the natural world, and we try to see it through a spiritual lens. And so this is a show where we're going to take a look at some of the things that are going on in the world, and we want to make certain that you are looking you were looking at it through a spiritual set of lenses on it. So with that being said, as always, I want to start with prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come to your people and to share your word with them on tonight. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. As I go forth, let my words come forth with grace. On tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now, Father, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I like the music, doctor. Amen. I, I got something for you um, that you, you, you probably get once every millennium. And uh, I have some prophetic utterances to give. Um, some that I don't don't boast about, I don't brag about, but I have to share some things tonight. Um, I'm a man of prayer. I've I've been in situations where I had no other choice but to pray, and over the years I've learned how to consistently pray until the point to where God speaks. I believe if I hold a conversation with the one who uses or who made the universe then I believe that he is intelligent enough to speak back to me. And so I've learned to pray until God speaks. And the more you pray, the more God speaks to you. And so in the process of me going back and forth with God, back and forth with God, about some of the things that's going on in our world, you know, I get on his show and talk about, we take a look at the things that are going on in the world and the natural, but we look at them through a set of spiritual lenses to see what's really going on with it. And so today I'm tasked with talking about some of the things that you see going on around the world, in particular, um, China, <laughs> the coronavirus to be exact. And I'm one of those individuals, I don't carry titles. Um, I rather have the anointing and the authority of a position than to simply carry the title. Um, but the Bible says, surely the Lord will do nothing except he revealed it unto his servant, the prophet. When something is going to happen in the earth, God will reveal to somebody that is close to him what is happening or what is about to happen. And when you look at what's going on in the world, in the natural is what we see is pandemonium and chaos and contagion, as they would call it. But in the spirit, it's something totally different. Totally, totally different. A few weeks ago, I had a vision, and I've had these visions quite often. I had a vision where it was as if a group of angels came. And I was caught up, kind of like Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones. And I was taken to China. And this has been probably about two to three months ago. And I was shown cities in China. And it was as if the angels of God were informing me that there was something that the Chinese government had done against Christians, as well as Muslims, which has been in the news, as far well as oppression that had reached the throne of God and the judgment of God was being loosed against China. And after seeing this and hearing this, I saw what looked like an entire city 
in China on fire. It's a blade in the spirit. And I woke up from that vision and texted my prayer partner and said, I don't know what's about to come out of China, but I see the judgment of God hitting that nation. Well, you see, I was praying just the other night, last night to be exact, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, China will not rule over the nation. And what the Lord was saying to me is, there is a movement by the communist regime in China to dominate the world. But the Lord has said that they will not rule over the nation. If you back up three to four years ago, everybody was running to China to do business. And if you fast forward to today, everybody with a business is running away from China. It is God's judgment unfolding in a way that may not be explainable to human nature. But God's judgment is always righteous. The Chinese government does a lot of secretive things and they control the media so they don't have to tell you everything that they're doing. And because of this, when they do something that is totally wicked, as we saw um, the portrayal of the things that were happening in the airports with the, in Hong Kong, how they just blatantly did what they wanted to do in front of the world. But now, it's as if the judgment of God is simply uprooting and overthrowing the rulers of that nation. Because it's going to take that nation now crying out to God in repentance to break this judgment that has come upon them. Military might, political solutions, not going to work. It's going to take that old passage that if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. The land is sick. The solution is before us. It's repentance. And honestly, many times I've seen things such as this happen where I would see it coming two to three months in advance and then I was, oh, that's what God was talking about. And I We'll see it play out, and then I ask God, how do you want me to pray about this? What do you want to do about this? And I've learned to let God set the course of his own action. Who am I to second guess God? I, I think about when Abraham was negotiating with God concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's a legendary story how a man who was so close to God could, could go back and forth with the Almighty and and get him to readjust his judgment conditions. But when you stop to think about it, who was Abraham to really second guess God? Who is anybody to tell God, you know, God, I think you're a little frustrated right now. You need to calm down. You're not thinking straight. This is what you need to do. Who has that capacity? <laughs> is it anybody? I don't think anybody has that capacity, whether it's Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. So who are we to sack and guess what God decides to do? And so I've learned to step back when God decides to do things that I don't understand. But then when he starts showing me something else, which was just today, today I was praying. 
and he began to show me something. And I know sometimes people were like, was he prophesying and he's saying this? And, you know, I've been told to proclaim what I'm saying. I was told today to proclaim it because I've been shown something else. I was in prayer today and all of a sudden it was as if I was suspended above the earth, above the nation of Italy. And I saw Italy. And particularly, I was impressed concerning the former Roman Empire. That the judgment of God is coming there next. And I say this because the Lord explained to me what he's doing. The spirit of the Lord says that he's going to loose the nations from the grips of tyranny that has prevented his righteousness from flowing freely in certain nations. And there have been nations that have enacted laws that have blocked the will of God and has hindered the flow of righteousness in those nations to flow freely. But God says in this year, the year 2020, he's going to lose his judgment and begin to lose the nations from the grips of tyranny. Keep your eyes on Italy. Another nation that he showed me that he's turning and is going to allow his righteousness to flow through is the nation of Iran. And there's going to be a loosening of the grip of these tyrannical governments around the world who have stood in the way of God's will being enacted. And so, I'm bringing this to your attention. So you know what's going on. You will see firsthand what's going on. And we don't have to be afraid because one of my favorite passages that I read from the Bible so often comes from Psalms 91. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the notes and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Then it says, thou shall not be afraid of the terrors by night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that lay waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high, thy dwelling place. Therefore, evil shall not befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Why? For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread up on lions and adders, and the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he had known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. When you see these things and you are a child of God, the psalmist is telling us 
that these things will come, but they will not affect the people of God. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. That's a mysterious statement to make in this day and age when you see pandemonium happening. Well, God has a way of bringing order out of chaos. God has a way of pointing people in the right direction when nobody knows which direction to turn to. And I feel that we are in a place now we're in an age we're in an hour where we really need to get back to the basics in god i i, I do some mentoring um, dream interpretation spiritual warfare and a lot of times I, I have mentees that see things just like i see things there are people that that the Lord deals with them in ways that they just can't go and talk to their pastor about it. God help them. They can't. They would, they, they would get condemned right there in the counseling room for just being what God is calling them to be or just expressing what God is calling them to be. And so I talk and mentor people on that level. And you would be surprised at some of the things that are going on around the world that are repeating similar to what I'm seeing. And a lot of times I don't say anything, but uh, it appears that uh, my silences have to come to an end because now I'm being um, commanded to talk. And so I think the important thing is to remember that when you look at the condition of the world, it is often a reflection of the condition of the church. You cannot blame the world for being the world. You cannot blame sinners for being sinners. We were all born in sin. But when you as a child of God, as a woman of God, a man of God, a servant of God, you find time to do everything other than spending time with God, then you will miss the major things and you will be on the tail end trying to figure out what's happening but now god is calling his people to return to the place of prayer to where we're not glued to the television trying to figure out what's going on in china i pray for the people who've been affected by this in whatever way but this is old news to me. I'm waiting for God to give me the signal to start praying for it to be turned off. And I'm telling you that there are some other things that are going to happen. So now that you're going to be on the forefront of no longer just sitting around waiting for just a few people nobody really knows about doing up the praying, now all the people of God are going to have to pray. Keep your eyes on the Roman Catholic Church. Keep your eyes on the old Roman Empire. Because you're about to see God uproot and overthrow and install leaders in different parts of the world that's going to allow the righteousness of God to go forth. Keep your eyes on this presidential campaign. You're going to see people exposed in ways that you didn't see coming. And there are going to be in there are individuals that have exalted themselves in unrighteousness to a level that it has become detestable in the sight of God. And many times when I see things that have really upset God, I try to pray for God's 
mercy. There are, there are major preachers in America that are about to be snatched out of their pulpits. Major. And I pray and I pray for God's mercy. And after a while, I get tired, I get up and I go to bed. Because you pray for the mercy of God. You pray for the mercy of God. And people, uh, they, they use the mercy of God like it's a credit card that, that never has a bill coming. But you're about to see the judgment of God play out so many different ways. You know, years ago, growing up in the South, my father, who's passed on, had a lot of children. In fact, he was a civil rights leader, and he was a very, very, very strong disciplinary. <laughs> he had this old leather belt. Okay, but he never took that belt off unless he meant business. And that belt had an iron buckle on it that think a link a link a link a link a link a link. And whenever you heard that clink a link a link a link, everything stopped at the sound of that clinking. All right. And when somebody had done something that we knew that that belt was going to come out. Everybody got back. We stood back because we knew that the wrath of my father was coming. And we would get out of the way. When you keep yourself in a position to when you know and the Lord reveals to you that his wrath is about to be loosed, you step back. <laughs> there was those times, you know, when... Somebody did something, and my father would come out the back with that belt. Well, who did it? And everybody is lying. We don't know who did it. Well, he said, I get the right one. <laughs> Got everybody. And then we quickly learned to point at those who were guilty. And my prayer has been this. There are people, nations, and individuals who do think that provoke God to anger. And they get in, in these positions in high places and they do these things to provoke God to judgment against the nation. But you know what my prayer is? Lord, when your judgment is loose, don't swing at everybody else first. You know, my dad would grab some of the wrong ones first and start, and before we finally tell that it was him, he did it. I've learned, God, let your judgment hit those that are guilty first. And perhaps the Lord will be satisfied with those who have done these things, who have brought these abominations front and center. Let the Lord deal with them first. And you know, the Lord told me that he's going to deal with them first. He's going to lose his judgment on those who have created a platform for abominations to be exalted on the world stage. And I'm like, oh boy. Now, this isn't something that he told me months ago. This is something he told me today between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Okay, and if it's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of, I'm certain I know how to pray and hear from God. So when you start seeing the world turn upside down, please stand up for the Lord. Let your name be counted among the righteous and not be fearful of what man is gonna say or what man is gonna do, but just know that you can stand for what God has declared as his righteousness. And as the people of God, the church of God, it's time for us to come back to the basics of God. We have to develop a sincere walk with God at this point. We're just, we're, we're wondering right now. I'm praying for us. I'm even praying and 
and, and started a prayer line. And man, I apologize. I don't have the numbers and things in front of me. But I pray because I want everybody else to pray. I want God to show some of these people some of the stuff he's showing me so I won't feel so bad that I'm the only somebody seeing it. I think I'm the only somebody seeing it. But it's not the case. There is a major spiritual battle that is taking place and the tide has turned to the favor of the people of God. But the people of God must take advantage of the moment, seize the opportunity to stand up for what is right. Therefore, I'm compelling you to pray. Well, that's all the time that I have for this week. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray as we conclude this broadcast. I'm going to pray that the people of God will go back to the altar and seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is there. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to pray. For your word says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. You said, then you would heal from heaven, and you would forgive our sins, and you would heal our land. Lord, we acknowledge that our land is sick and it needs healing, but you want us to acknowledge that our ways need changing. And we must first humble ourselves and pray. So I'm praying that you would give us a spirit of humility. That regardless of what our title is and where we reside, what we preach in on Sunday mornings or do Bible classes in on Wednesday night, that we won't look at the stage that we've built in front of men, but rather we will look at the altar that we've built before God. And begin to take a hold to that altar, yes. And ask you, O oh God, to have mercy upon us. And allow your name and your righteousness and your will to go forth. For the nations, O oh God, shall become yours. And you shall rule over them with a rod of iron. For you are the Lord of hosts. And you are the King of kings. And to your reign there shall be no end. Today, we thank you that you have instructed your heavenly hosts to begin the march upon the nations, that they would uproot, O oh God, and overthrow those things, those wicked powers from this city to around the world, O oh God, to commit the movement of the great revival of the nations, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. And we give you all the glory, God. In your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, I'm so glad to be able to be a blessing. You have a wonderful night.